Hey, my name is uh, Sajeev John, and I work at the University of Toronto in the physics department. Uh, my general areas are in uh, condensed matter physics and quantum optics, and my focus area right now is in the field of uh, photonic crystals. Uh, these are materials that uh, trap light and allow it to perform functions somewhat similar to what electronics does, as well as a variety of other things. Okay, I think photonic crystals are probably the ultimate uh, light trap. They allow light to be confined on a microscopic scale on the scale of the optical wavelength. And as a result of that, you can not only trap it, but you can guide it uh, in a circuit path, uh, have it perform functions, uh, one can focus the light very strongly so that even with very low power levels, one can perform switching effects, uh, optical transistor effects. Uh, that's one general area which started the field, and now there are a variety of other applications that uh, people are getting interested in as well. My most recent interest has been in the application of photonic crystals to uh, solar energy harvesting, uh, and one of the ingredients of that is being able to trap light over a broad range of wavelengths coming from the sun and over a broad range of incoming angles. Uh, a material like silicon, which is the most commonly used solar cell material, has the unfortunate property that for a large part of the spectrum, uh, say from the red to the near infrared, uh, it's very weakly absorbing. And so we really need a light trapping mechanism that allows that sunlight to dwell in a thin film structure so that it actually can be absorbed and converted into electricity. Photonic uh, crystals uh, allow light to be deflected into a direction in which it can bounce around and dwell inside the structure. It's basically a periodic microstructure. So rather than having a flat film, uh, one has uh, holes, maybe conical shaped holes forming a lattice, and the light uh, ends up going in very slow modes as a result of the scattering from all these holes and it dwells inside the structure and can be absorbed even if the intrinsic absorption of silicon is very weak at that wavelength. For the solar cell application of uh, photonic crystals, silicon is one of the best uh, materials to target because it is very, very weakly absorbing in the uh, red to near infrared, meaning that in the case of silicon, uh, we can reduce the amount of material required by about a factor of 300. There are other materials, of course, like uh, gallium arsenide, where it's already quite well absorbing, so we can only reduce the amount of material by about a factor of 10, but that's still a substantial savings. And we've also studied materials like organics, polymers, and uh, there we expect roughly about a 50% enhancement in the efficiency of these organic solar cells. We're basically uh, experimenting with various different approaches. Some of them are based on growth. For example, uh, one can grow posts of silicon that form into a lattice by uh, well-known techniques. Uh, one can also try to drill holes in uh, silicon, or one could create a, a sort of a template or a stamp where you make one of these photonic crystals and that can just be imprinted onto a material over and over again and repetitively make uh, solar cells by depositing silicon into that uh, imprinted template. Right now, the focus has been on trying to match the best available efficiency of a solar cell except with maybe a factor of a 100 or 300 less amount of material. And we think we've already reached that point of designing structures that you, know, you can get 25% power conversion efficiency in silicon. The next step is to see if one can use other properties of the photonic crystals, for example, the ability to focus light and create very high intensity spots to take some of the energy that could not be absorbed at all, that is below the band gap of silicon, and convert it up to a higher energy where it could be absorbed. So there, one might ultimately be looking at uh, a so silicon solar cell that might have 30% efficiency. Well, solar is an area that I've just entered in in the last few years. I actually was just at a SPIE meeting three years ago that I immersed myself in some of the sessions on solar energy and learned what the, the challenges are. So we're at the point of 
just designing and starting to fabricate the structures. Uh, the next step is to find ways of making this sufficiently cost effective such that one uh, actually could conceive of commercializing it. Another uh, practical application that we're considering for photonic crystals is in the field of uh, biomedical optics and uh, medical diagnostics. So there's great interest in being able to do uh, testing of uh, proteins that might be in the blood and other tissues on a chip uh, where you could use microfluidic channels to flow this material, this biological material, on a photonic crystal chip. It would attach in certain regions based on uh, certain materials that you had placed on the surface, and that would be a way of detecting the presence of diseases without having to send your sample off to a lab and wait a few days until the report came back. This could all be done on a compact chip. That's another goal of trapping light on a chip and being able to sense uh, biological uh, materials and differentiate them. There are also some uh, fundamental uh, applications uh, that aren't really something commercial, but one thing that we are very excited about right now is uh, one of the holy grails in physics, which is uh, whether one can bring quantum physics onto a macroscopic scale. And this is the subject of Bose-Einstein condensation. And we do believe now that with photonic crystals, it might be able, possible to achieve Bose-Einstein condensation in a semiconductor using electron hole pairs, the same things that we're generating with the sunlight, uh, that these might Bose condense not at the usual low temperatures that one is accustomed to for Bose condensation, but at room temperature. And we now have some designs that uh, may allow that to happen. So that's one thing that we're excited about right now.